everybody, it's Joe with J Blake Photo, and I am here at CES 2019. It's been open since like Sunday, Monday. It was open even before that for media. Uh, it opened yesterday for exhibits, and I was here yesterday in the afternoon, kind of got the lay of the land, because this place is enormous. So I had a couple of my own ideas about things that I wanted to check out or experience while I was here at CES, but I also dropped a poll on my YouTube channel. I'm gonna see if I can walk and record at the same time. As a chopped garlic. Uh, okay, cook it at CES. I have no idea where I'm going right now. And the prevailing thought seems to be that I should be looking at action cams and drones. Now you know I love that stuff. But I plan on being here for three days, so I want to hit up as much as I can. I mean, check this place out. It's like a city in here, it's crazy. I think Samsung's display is actually called Samsung City. So your backpack's open. So my plan is to hit up all the big camera manufacturers today. I'm gonna take a look at Canon, I'm gonna take a look at Nikon, the folks over at Sony, see what they've got going on. And then tomorrow, probably hit up DJI and GoPro. But there's a ton of cool stuff here, so let's take a look. So I'm over at the Panasonic booth where they've got Lumix cameras on display over here. And I asked them, you know, what would it take for somebody like myself shooting Canon, with lots of Canon lenses to switch to the Panasonic system? I don't really see that in my future, but I thought it was worth the question. Well, like they make an adapter, Sigma makes an adapter for Canon to L mount. Okay. So you could use your existing gear. Our own glass, like sure. it has their own glass. But you can also get Leica, you can also do Yeah, Sigma. exactly, it's all native, it's all native glass. So what's the what's the downside to switching from native to like a Sony or or if uh, Canon maybe like or using adaptive Nikon. glass? Yeah. So using what's the um, downside. Our, our focus system is, is Panasonic's DFD contrast okay. system. So you you get DFD, which gives you the fastest, best autofocus system when you use native lenses. Gotcha. And if you're not using native lenses, then it would just be contrast based okay. or manual. Or manual. Got it. They do have some really awesome looking bodies and I know that the GH5 is a super popular camera for folks on YouTube as well as the fact that you can adapt Canon and, uh, and other manufacturers glass to fit on their bodies. The in-body stabilization looks phenomenal and with their lenses you get the in-body stabilization with the lens stabilization to really kind of improve the overall smoothness of your video. So whenever you're at a convention like this you always have to uh, stop and just kind of check out the crazy absurd stuff. I'm at a desk that has a bike. Also, these desks go up and down. Okay, I want one of these. It's Tiffin. All right, so I'm trying to get to the Nikon booth, but um, it's on the other side of Samsung Town. Whole wall in front of me. And I couldn't believe how much I could cook. Here at the Sony booth, the deal is definitely immersive experiences. They've got robots, they've got PlayStation VR, there's, they make movies, they make 8K projectors, they've got a 360 degree sound thing over there. But the real reason that I wanna come to the Sony booth today is to take a look at those new cameras. Or get your photo taken in front of a giant eyeball. So there's definitely a lot going on over at the Sony booth. Um, even though Nikon had a lot of cameras to play with and a lot of people to talk to you about the cameras, the Sony booth really didn't have that. They had one display of cameras, they had a model, uh, and then they had some folks kind of answering questions, but nowhere near as many people as they had at the Nikon booth. So Nikon so far definitely winning on the, uh, on the representation front. This next booth should have a ton of representation.
dangerous. I would have, I would have caught your camera. Yeah. I would have caught your camera. All right, well, I thought I fixed the audio problem with my microphone while I was at the show, but apparently I didn't. The rest of the clips that I have for that day don't have audio. The things that I wanted to say, the things that I did say before I left for the day, number one was that I had a wonderful time going to the Canon, Nikon, Sony, and Panasonic booths. They were all super nice, very helpful, and just put on a great show honestly. I would also say that Panasonic and Sony had the smallest representations of their cameras there. Panasonic's being the smallest for sure. Sony's, you know, they did have cameras on display. They had a handful of them. I did get an opportunity to shoot for just a couple of minutes with the a7 III, as well as, you know, they had a, a model there, an acrobat, um, so that was kind of fun to be able to have an, an opportunity to shoot a little bit with that camera. My takeaway from the Sony booth is definitely the fact that that camera is fast, but not easy to use. Once I got it configured and I was able to look through it and, and, and do what I wanted to do with it and take some shots, that was fine. I'm sure when people go to conventions, they go into camera menu settings and they just mess with stuff. So I was probably undoing something that somebody else had done Getting moderate ISO with a fast shutter speed and an open aperture took me a couple of minutes. I don't know. It was just, it was, maybe I was just having a, a, a slow brain moment, but it, it just took me a couple of minutes to really get all that stuff hammered out. And then going to the Nikon booth, handling, oh, the Panasonic booth didn't have any cameras to hold. Uh, you, everything was in a glass case, as you saw. There, there wasn't anything you could touch and use and nothing to shoot. The Canon booth and the Nikon booth definitely had the most that you could handhold. Canon's booth had two different areas uh, with cameras set up for macro photography, for like there were, uh, there was a whole food display, and then there was also like a little mini racetrack running around that you could also take photos of. So both of those setups were really nice. A lot of it was actually geared towards printing on the Canon side. Each of those stations had digital printers that you could um, take a card to and get prints made. But they were prints of the, you know, the food and the, and the little race car thing that they had. They did have a whole area with guys talking about uh, lenses and cameras. I did get my all my gear professionally cleaned, which was really nice. They had a CPS booth there so that you could you know, get all your stuff uh, serviced and maintenance, which was great. They had one separate area for the EOS R, so they actually had that camera on display in a separate zone, although it was also on display with the other DSLRs. It had kind of its own booth, uh, it, you know, it had it cut in half, and there was all sorts of uh, folks talking about it. They had some of their video cameras, they had some of their AI stuff, development stuff, 3D scanning stuff, but it was all imaging focused, which was really nice. There wasn't really anything special to shoot except those macro opportunities. And again, that was more geared towards printing. But I really did enjoy having some really great conversations with some folks over at uh, the area where they had all their cameras and lenses. And the booth was kind of this, you know, self-contained little zone that was nice. But in my mind, by far, the wind goes to Nikon in terms of their booth and what they had on display. So in addition to having the big glass case with all their stuff in it, they also had two or three tables that were just DSLRs. They had DSLRs, they had their smaller, lower-end consumer cameras, they had some of their point-and-shoots, uh, they had all of it lined up, and at each table there were three or four professional folks to talk to you about their cameras, about their lenses, about the technology. They also had areas where they would have a handful of cameras set up, kind of like the Sony booth, where you could take pictures of models that were set up and they would interchange them occasionally. They also had models walking through the area where the cameras were on the table. So you could actually just pick any camera up off the table if they didn't have it over in the model area and take photos. They had three different very colorful studio setups where you could get your photo taken or take a photo in this kind of really cool and crazy colorful environment. And then also they had kind of a lecture hall setup where professional photographers were talking about sports photography, wildlife photography, and the wildlife photography actually had an emphasis on wildlife protection and um, natural preservation, which was really nice. I mean, they had really a lot of the things that each of the other manufacturers had, but they had them all together, which was really, really nice. 
So all in all, I would say the best conversation that I had was at the Canon booth, but that's because I shoot Canon. So we were talking about a lot of the same stuff. Got a lot of really great ideas on places to shoot in the Southwest here and some cool landscaped ideas. Talk with a guy who's been doing wedding photography for 30 years and some of the just interesting stories that he had to tell. So really just great conversations, met some amazing people, but by far the best demonstration, the best example of uh, a welcoming booth was the Nikon booth for sure. And I did get an opportunity to, to hold the Z7 and the Z6 in my hand. I'm not a huge fan of the way that they hold in the hand. If I was to go mirrorless, the EOS R feels a lot bigger in the hand. Although honestly, my favorite camera that I picked up the entire time was the Nikon D850, which really surprised me. But just the way that that camera felt in the hand, the way that it operated as I was manipulating it, and that shutter was just so satisfying, it just felt so good. I would say second to that, second to the D850, would be the Canon 7D Mark II. I had, um, I had not had a chance to really hold onto that camera much, and it was really fun to get that in the hand. Anyway, uh, sorry for the botched video. Really kind of a bummer that my audio cut out. Hopefully that won't be an issue in the future. I'll try and figure out what that was. Uh, the battery is charged on my microphone. Uh, just for some reason, I, I, I shoot with the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus and it's supposed to automatically detect when the camera is in video mode. It just didn't, it didn't, it didn't kick in. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. For those of you who are interested in cameras and lenses at CES 2019, who are not able to attend, I hope that this has given you just a little bit of a peek into what the show was like, what the atmosphere was. Uh, it was just, it's a crazy atmosphere. In my next video, I'm gonna show you what I saw over in the South Hall at the DJI booth and some of the other just crazy stuff that was there. I've got a lot of other videos planned, a lot of stuff going on for 2019. Go ahead and hit the like button. That really helps tell YouTube that this was what you were looking for. So if you're looking for videos about CES or if you click this link because you're a subscriber to my channel, hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, subscribe. I put out a couple of videos a week about photography, videography, drones, and all things technology. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're interested in stuff like that and hit the notification bell so that YouTube will tell you when I post a new video. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video which should hopefully be coming out really soon. Click the picture of my face which should be right about here to subscribe to my channel and I'll go ahead and put some how-to videos that I've been working on recently for stuff that you might want to learn how to do if you want to do something new. Thanks!